Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and lots is going on in our slash my world right now that I want to share with you. The first one is um, I announced Diet Fiction, the movie, is out. It's on iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo, On Demand, and Google Play. It's number one on iTunes again this week and it is in the top four of documentaries um, on all platforms combined, which is great. It's being shown all over the world. In fact, the producer, Mihal Samuski, um, sent me an email with pictures. I guess a medical school in Bangalore someplace showed the film and uh, to medical students, which is great. Uh, we showed it here last night and had a Q&A afterwards. Um, everybody likes the film. I mean, there's not much to not like. It's a great expose on how terrible the diet industry is, the weight loss industry is. So if you haven't seen it yet, uh, go to one of these platforms and, and download it and watch it. Also, the book is now available on Amazon. So you can get it in the form of an ebook, and you can also get it in the form of a paperback book. Now, a question that came up last night that I'll mention, uh, during the Q&A after the film, somebody said, are there references in the film? Because I really always enjoy the stuff you're in because it's so well referenced. Actually, the film doesn't contain so many references because it's really about the ineptitude of the weight loss industry. However, in the book, it's very carefully referenced because we talk a lot about um, strategies that work for weight loss and things that don't work and the causes of various things. So there's quite a bit of referencing in the book. So if you're interested in factual information with references, get the paperback book so you actually can flip through it. I don't know about you, but I have e-readers and that sort of thing, but there are some types of books I feel like I need to have physically in my hand because it's easier to go back through and that sort of thing. So anyway, that's what's going on with diet fiction. Second thing is this week, uh, Thursday, I'm flying to New York and I'm going to be part of the Truth About Health Conference in Melville, New York. There's a, it's at the Hilton, I believe, in Melville. Um, this is a two-week conference. I'm only there for, um, for Friday, Saturday is when the speaking is going on. I fly home on Sunday. Uh, Dr. Peter Bregan is also going to be there. Um, during the time that I'm there. And um, it's, a, it's a great conference. Lots of different points of view. Um, goes on for a couple weeks. Uh, very well organized and um, uh, lots of information. It's a combination of interviews and lectures and Q&A and book signings and panel discussions and that sort of thing. The last time I was there, I participated in a panel discussion that included me, Colin Campbell, Kim Williams from the um, American College of Cardiology, former president of the, co of the college, uh, and Caldwell Esselstyn. And I think we did three hours of Q&A from the audience and from um, the, the Steve Shore, the guy who organizes this conference. And um, that's really a unique thing. You don't get to see that type of thing very much. And in fact, it, was, it went over so well that we've organized our conferences now to have more Q&A sessions because people really, really like it. So anyway, feel free to come out and visit. I've already heard from some of you because I made the announcement last week and would love to have you come and see my lecture. It's Truth About Health Conference in Melville, New York. You can get all the details, how to get there, the whole thing. So if you live in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, um, even some parts of Pennsylvania, your easy driving distance, do come out. I'd love to you know, have a conversation with you and, and, uh, and meet you if, you're, if you watch me on YouTube and, and uh, you want to come see me in person. That would be great. I'll sign your book when you get there. All right, um, last thing is um, we, I think, do the best job of training professionals in our field of anybody. Um, we are the only company that I know that owns a school and is teaching health professionals how to use informed decision making in their practices with diet and lifestyle change as a primary form of intervention. A lot of our classes are live and interactive. You don't have to be here, though. You can be any place on the planet and uh, take part in our programming. And so I'd invite you to send me an email at pampopper at msn.com if you'd like to talk about it. So um, anyway, the topic I chose for today um, is the ketogenic diet, um, which I don't, I don't think it's a good idea for weight loss. I've already talked about that on this channel. But it's some new information about how the mechanism of action for how the ketogenic diet actually does work for epileptic children. And, um, and so I think it's important that we understand there's usefulness for this diet. It's just being misused by many, many people. So anyway, I'll just start by saying the gut microbiome is sort of the new frontier in medicine. 
Um, and there's more that we don't know than that we do know. And one of the reasons why, um, it, you know, I, I end up doing a lot of classes and reading a lot. I'm, I'm creating a course on the microbiome because I think it's so important. There aren't any diseases we talk about here that don't involve a discussion of the microbiome. But um, just to tell you what a new form of or topic for studies it is, um, about 90% of the articles in the medical journals right now that have been published about the microbiome were published uh, on, in 2004 or later. So most people, most health professionals were out of school by the time research really started picking up. So anyway, and that's what this, um, this video clip has to do with. So recent online workshop on the microbiome, and I do these all the time. I mean, I, get, I probably spent 30 hours online last year taking microbiome classes because there's so much to learn. Anyway, it featured a, this workshop featured a speaker, uh, researcher Christine Olson, who presented, her presentation was all about the mechanism of action by which the ketogenic reduces seizures, and it's through changes in the gut microbiome. So previously, and I went back and read some of what I had written about this topic, it was thought that the positive effect on the keto diet, um, of the keto diet on seizures was due to caloric restriction or the conversion um, to the brain beginning to use ketones for fuel instead of glucose. But according to Olson and her colleagues, shortly after adopting a ketogenic diet, the gut microbiome in mice, the studies were done in mice, shifts in a very specific way that protects against electrically induced seizures. The shift involves, involves first of all, decreased microbial diversity and increased populations of particular bacteria. Uh, the two biggest ones were Acromantia municifilia and Parabacteroides. Uh, SPP. And these particular bacteria, through a very complicated chemical process, actually increase the production of, um, of uh, gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA, in the brain, and higher GABA levels are associated with reduced um, incidence of seizures. The higher GABA levels are protective against seizures. So the bottom line is the ketogenic diet, it's not the fat intake, it's not the calorie restriction, it really is the effect of the diet on the microbiome that offers protection against seizures. Now the research may explain, uh, well one other thing I'll mention is the keto diet doesn't provide any protection for germ-free mice or mice who have been given large doses of antibiotics. And this is important because so many children, um, epileptic and otherwise, are given a lot of antibiotics, not only um, for ear infections and things like that, but they're consuming antibiotics in the food supply. I've spoken about that quite a bit. But when germ-free or non-responder mice were uh, given a fecal transplant um, with the two bacteria I mentioned before, uh, the seizures uh, were reduced or they stopped. So this research would have some bearing on the question we've all been asking for a long time, why is it that the ketogenic diet doesn't work for all epileptic children? And it doesn't. So it appears that particular changes in the gut microbiome are required in order for the diet to work. And some children, particularly those who have been birthed by C-section, formula fed, given a lot of antibiotics, they simply don't have the raw material in their guts to bring about the right changes that would make the diet um, work for them. So these kids may need to take probiotics or even have a fecal transplant prior to starting the diet in order for it to be effective. And um, if you take a look at what happens to little children who have several seizures a day, in the absence of some intervention like the keto diet, um, these kids grow into adulthood still having those seizures in many instances and they are disabled, unable to work and even go to school in some cases. Um, this research is the basis for testing another option for helping epileptic children. Um, UCLA, which was the site of the study that I am covering here, has granted a license to a company to make a probiotic treatment which could possibly replace the ketogenic diet um, for epileptic children. And this approach would be, first of all, so much easier for parents. If you've ever known a parent who's had to do this with a child, it's not an easy thing to do. So it would be easier, and it would also allow children to avoid the negative side effects of the diet, which are really considerable. I know the folks that listen to this and uh, and watch this who are on keto diets don't like to hear it, but the bottom line is children who successfully overcome their seizures with a keto diet often spend the rest of their life recovering from the damage, and people who do keto diets or adopt them for weight loss uh, also suffer severe health consequences if they stay with it. 
So I'm going to save you the trouble of sending me 25 or 50 or 100 posts saying how great you feel on a keto diet because that really doesn't matter. I mean, people feel great after they drink wine, but we don't really promote that as a means for health improvement. Okay, so you don't have to post that. I, some of you do it every week anyway, but I'll, I'll, I'll understand if you don't feel like posting that this week for me. Um, yet another potential approach, I was looking at uh, doing some research on how else could you increase these GABA levels in the brain if that's protective and, um, or, or in the gut. And one of the ways is by eating a plant-based diet that, concludes, that includes considerable amounts of uh, foods with a high content of resistant starch. Now resistant starch feeds the beneficial bacteria in the microbiome and results of in, in increased production of short chain fatty acids, GABA, and all kinds of other molecules that are helpful for this particular problem and can affect seizure activity. Now the foods we're talking about include, with resistant starch, include oats, rice, legumes, and potatoes. And in the case of potatoes and rice, I thought this was really interesting. Um, cooking, cooling, and reheating um, increases the resistant starch content of these foods. Now why this is significant is that um, we've advocated for a long time here as a means of implementing this diet, batch cooking. And this is what I do, by the way, because I don't have a lot of time during the week uh, to prepare food because my uh, schedule is so crazy. Like last night I had a half hour to eat dinner before we showed the film and had a Q&A and you know, so there's always so much going on. So I cook on Sunday and then that's what I eat all week long. Well, this cooking the potatoes on Sunday and reheating them increases the resistant starch content of the potatoes or the rice or whatever it is that you're making and, um, and that leads to even better gut health. So doing it's one of those things where doing the convenient thing actually ends up being the better thing for health. And there aren't many uh, situations where you can actually say that. So all in all, um, I think this is some great research that, that may lead to even better outcomes. I mean, the outcomes for kids who do the keto diet are really pretty good, all things considered. It's the best shot children have of living a normal life if they do this and they're epileptic as toddlers. Um, but if we could accomplish the same thing with fecal transplant and probiotic, I think uh, probiotics, I think a lot of parents would be all over that idea because it's a heck of a lot different, uh, easier than trying to keep a child at that age on a very, very strict diet where everything has to be weighed and measured and that sort of thing. So I'll keep you posted. I'll probably take another 30 hours of these types of classes this year too because there is a lot to learn. And I am really interested now because I'm putting together this uh, course on the microbiome. So if that interests you, you can send me an email at pampopper at msn.com and I'll send you a description of the course. I'll be teaching it live, by the way, probably toward the end of, this, um, of the winter semester and then I'll uh, videotape it and you'll have access to it online as well. All right, hit that subscribe button. We're going for 25,000 subscribers. We gave out a certificate for courses last week. So uh, let's go for 25,000. Hit the subscribe button. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you Thursday with more news.